you your ultimate team coin needs, check out utcoinsforyou.com. There will be a link in the description. And if you use the code CHEZ, you can get yourself a 5% discount. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode. We're into episode number 40 and Gary Cahill would like to leave. We start with some sad news. Obviously we're starting David Luiz and Rafael Varane at the minute. He's not getting as much first team football as he would like and uh, and we're going to be moving him on if we possibly can in the January transfer window and quickly of course stepping back down to world class from Legendary. We covered that in the last episode. If you missed that feel free to go and check it out. I do explain the reasons as to why we're going down. It's just an experiment that uh, wasn't necessary necessarily as fruitful as it could have been. So we're back on our class, we start against a game that probably would have been a little bit easier regardless of a difficulty level. It's Leicester at home, we currently sit fourth in the table, seven full points away from Arsenal at the top of the table, but if we can pick up a win here, then we'll start to close the gap, and that's exactly what we want to do. Of course, with the uh, the board want us to win every single competition we're in this year, and unfortunately we're already out of the Capital One Cup, although we did win that last year, so I'm not too fussed about that in the uh, in the grand scheme of things, but Willian has a decent effort there. It's blocked by the defender, but you'll be able to see from the replay, it is illegally blocked by a hand that flies up, I slowed it down a little bit, because uh, just so you can see it clearly does strike the uh, defender on the hand really poor attempt at a block really you should never put your arms up that high in the penalty area and uh, Arturo Vido justly puts away the penalty into the top right hand corner and fully dishes out the punishment for the mistake by the defender and we take a 1-0 lead and then a little bit later on we're actually going to try and get ourselves further in front but it's a good save from the goalkeeper to stop Marco Royce again from picking up a goal he's in the right positions, he's having the chances, it's just a case of biding his time, trying to make sure that he can, or trying to ensure that he can get into a run of goal scoring form. But uh, Lewis Muriel is our goal scorer in form at the minute, but uh, we came close to conceding here. We had to rely on Petacek to uh, to keep them out. We'd been on top for most of the game, but they still kept catching me on the counter-attack every now and again. But Danilo plays a lovely through ball, 1-2 to, uh, to Lucas Piazza and races away, pops the ball into the back of the net. And Lucas Piazza has been seeing more and more first-team football recently. Of course, still not in the uh, the out-and-out -out first team because of uh, the form of Eden Hazard, Willian and Andre Schürrle, but still definitely put, put putting himself in the mixer for uh, for those rotation spots and Arturo Vidal coming close to picking up a third there but that was how the game was going to finish we're going to take a 2-0 win goals from Arturo Vidal from the spot and Lucas Piazza so very very pleased with the outcome of that game and the performance to boot we, we definitely showed that we are or we were the better team but uh, we're back to Champions League action and you'll be able to tell from the league table that's going to come up in just a second this is an extremely important game Porto sit top of the group on 10 we are joint second with Valencia both on 8 so of course we've got standard Liège so whatever happens between Porto and Valencia if we win this game we will qualify for the knockout stages of the Champions League. We are, get off to a great start. Luis Muriel twisting and turning. The defenders cannot cope. And he finds his way through to put the ball into the back of the net. Nice tidy finish from close range to ensure that uh, we get off to a great start. And this time it's more of a poacher's effort. Just picking up from the mistake from the defender. Although you'll be able to see from the replay. He initially makes the mistake by missing the, uh, the first touch there. And then the defender can't get it. Because uh, you would presume the defender was expecting Muriel to take a touch. So a caught him off balance. Ball deflects back to the striker unfortunately he's able to race away smash it tops so we take a comfortable 2-0 lead or comfortable so I thought but that is a fantastic first time finish from their striker I'm not going to try and pronounce his name because I will only screw it up but uh, fantastic first time finish from him so they're back in the game at 2-1 and they actually were causing me a few problems on the counter attack but Quadro SMO is going to come close tries to whip it from the edge of the box and it draws a good save out of the goalkeeper so we go in at half time with a 2-1 lead so as it stands we're heading through to the knockout stages of the Champions League but we don't only want to go through we want to finish top of the group as well if we possibly can to try and ensure a decent draw for the first knockout round but we get off to a horrible start at the beginning of the second half there was a penalty at the beginning of the second half in the Leicester game it went to us this time it's to the opposition Branislav Ivanovic just steps in there knocks the uh, the player off balance it is a penalty it's the slightest of touches but you are taught as a striker any contact in the box go down and see what you can get they went down they won the penalty and they took it fantastically smashed it straight down the middle just underneath the bar Thibaut Courtois absolutely no chance we were going to have to rely on Courtois yet again he's going to make a double save here mistake from the defender comes out to a uh, to jump on the rebound to make sure that they don't go in front but of course if we draw this and Valencia win against Porto 
Then we're out of the Champions League and Dave came up trumps. He scored a screamer for us earlier on in the season and he's popped up on the edge of the box with yet another one. Fantastic finish from him to win us the game and guarantee us, guarantee us Champions League knockout stage football for the rest of the season. As you can see, huge transfer budget bonus as well of £10 million. That will definitely come in handy with the January transfer window just round the corner. As you can see, we do finish top and Valencia did beat Porto. So if we had done anything other than win that game, we would have been out. So Porto get 10 points in the group stage, but don't progress. It really is quite extraordinary. Us and Valencia progressing through both on 11 points. So we come into the final game of the episode away at Aston Villa. Now, if you remember from uh, the earlier on in the season, Villa actually made a fantastic start. We sat top for a while and were in and around the Champions League spots until just two or three games ago in uh, in the grand scheme of things. They have recently dropped down to ninth, as you can see, dropped off the pace, now picked up six defeats. I think a lot of those have come in like the last seven or eight games, so they really have dropped away. But they were going to go 1 0 up here. Fantastic poachers' effort from Christian Benteke. Ashley Cole just doesn't quite read the flight of the ball as it comes over it's coming at about waist height and just as he reaches up or decides to reach up to try and get his foot in the way it drops right in front of him and there's nothing he can do watch the replay it gets to about there and then just drops dramatically just a couple of yards in front of him misses the ball and Benteke pops it away really nice finish really good poachers finish that's what you want from a player of, uh, of that sort if he's going to get on the end of crosses you're going to stand chances to win games but David Luiz doesn't want Aston Villa to win games comes up from centre back on the edge of the box cheeky double step over step to the inside and he smashes it into the back of the net and we'll definitely see a replay of that one as well this one is going towards the corner but just as the goalkeeper dies you'll see just before he gets there it swerves just slightly to the right as he strikes it. it's quite straight and then swerves right at the last minute i think that's just enough to make sure that it goes past bad Guzan into the back of the net but they've actually got Hernanes on their ranks Ben Teke should have hit that first time that is a wonderful double save from Petitek palm it up onto the bar from the free kick from Hernanes and then to get back across to thwart Ben Teke is just phenomenal goalkeeping and he definitely is still my out and out number one goalkeeper someone who definitely is not one of my out and out first names on the team sheet is Romelu Lukaku I will be trying to move him on in January and potentially get a replacement if possible that is 100% going to happen in the January transfer window. So I was trying to play him almost, you know, kind of to put him in the shot window. So if he can put in some good performances, maybe his value will rise. Maybe uh, it could kind of spark some interest from other areas of the Premier League or of world football, European football. So that was kind of the uh, the thoughts behind starting Romelu Lukaku in this one. But he wasn't really doing too much for me. Having a couple of chances, but not really, uh, you know putting any of them away like you you might expect like Lewis Muriel had done in that game against Standard Liège but every time they whipped the ball in from set pieces from crosses they were looking for Christian Benteke the first chance was well served by Petacek fortunately the second one was off the the, uh, the centre back Akure and he didn't quite have the technique to get a decent shot on goal Marco Royce does have a decent shot on goal but again he's just so unlucky he's having chance after chance this season and they just won't go into the back of the net goalkeepers are making last ditch saves he's hitting the woodwork it just just will not go in for him but I'm going to keep pressing on with him because he's been putting the performances in and he does deserve to be on the starting 11 so he's going to continue in that cam roll for now although Oscar might see a little bit more football than he has been recently because of course he is uh, homesick he came to me and said he's homesick so I might try and pray try and play him a little bit more often because I really don't want to lose Oscar he's rated 86 he's only like 22 and he's valued at 32 million pounds so uh, he's definitely an asset I want to keep but that is all for today's video so thank you very much for watching guys please do feel free to leave the video a like if you did enjoy that would be absolutely superb if you could do that for me if you did miss yesterday's video where like I said I discussed the uh, the drop from legendary back down to world class then there is an annotation on the screen over that snippet of gameplay if you aren't subscribed to the channel and you wish to do so there's plenty of daily FIFA content coming here so click the subscribe button or there will be a link in the description or an annotation on the screen over that subscribe emblem there and that's going to bring this one to a close so thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you tomorrow